we'll be installing a 7 inch lift on a 2015 Ram 1500, 5.7 liter. It is a two wheel drive truck, so the max track suspension parts we will be using are only applicable to a two wheel drive. I just started by measuring the ride height, the current ride height of the vehicle, just so that when I do the alignment, uh, the change in specs, the difference when it's lifted, it'll be easier for me to input when I do the alignment. And we're gonna begin showing you the parts that we're gonna install in the truck. All right, these are our four and a half inch spindle lift. These nice bulky, heavy duty, great quality parts. Always make sure that you have all your parts before you begin removing any uh, parts on your truck. Just wanna make sure you have all your parts and the correct parts. These are our front coil springs. As you can see, our factory ones will probably come up to here. We're gonna be installing, these are two and a half inch plus the three, plus the four and a half inch on the spindles, which will give us a seven inch lift. These are our front shocks. Rear coil springs, right here, this is gonna be the bottom, plus the coil spring spacer that we're gonna put on the bottom. Those are just gonna sit just like that. This is our rear shock. This one I have extended. This one, you can see the travel. Since we'll be lifting the truck, we have to extend the, uh, or basically lower the center bearing on the drive shaft because we need to get a correct angle. Since we're raising it, you don't want to have a tight angle at the center of the drive shaft. This is our track bar extension for the rear. It's gonna go in just like that. Since we'll be raising the truck, obviously, most of the components that are on the truck, we're gonna have to extend them. All right, so uh, we got the spring and the spindle in. Everything just caught, nothing's tight right now we want to make sure everything's set perfectly. You want to make sure the springs are set in their boots and their stoppers correctly. And make sure nothing doesn't look any type of way like your, uh, your uh, sway bar links, your sway bar on the other side. And uh, everything's basically loose right now. Lower control arms loose, upper control arms loose, spindle, everything is loose as you can see. So we got this in start tightening everything up uh, make sure you torque to manufacture specs I'm just gonna catch everything and then final uh, assembly will be retorquing everything all right so our last component for the front end is gonna be our shocks so I'm basically gonna slide them up I'm gonna mount them in the bottom and we're gonna bring the whole truck down just so we can get the travel for the upper control arm. All right, so uh, we're gonna begin the rear disassembly on the 15 Ram. It's, rear end is pretty simple. You're basically gonna loosen the lower control arms. You're gonna lower the rear end Loosen the shock, you're gonna remove this since we're not using this anymore. We're gonna to have to remove the fender liner just to access the bolts up top for the rear shock. Then we're basically gonna put our pole jacks, support the rear end, lower it down. We're gonna disconnect our sway bar links from the top. We're gonna to disconnect our track bar. And right here is where we're gonna put our track bar extension. That big bracket that I showed you guys earlier, it's gonna go here. It's basically just gonna level this out because basically the rear end is gonna be lower than what it is right now. So we're gonna lower the rear end, remove the springs, remove the shocks, install the new shocks. We're gonna put the, set the new spring in there with the stopper. It's gonna sit right on the, on the bottom right there. And then we're just gonna screw the pole jacks straight up. So we're uh, pulling down the fender liner to get access to the rear shocks and lower control arms in the rear. This one's much easier than doing the front. We're basically gonna remove the shocks on both sides. We're gonna support the rear axle and loosen the control arm. You don't need to remove any bolts. You're literally just gonna loosen and lower and remove the track bar so we could add the track bar bracket. After the lift kit has been 
installed, you want to get your wheels and tires mounted and balanced. We mounted our uh, 35 by 12 and a half inch tire on our 20 by 12 inch wheels. Since our wheels are so wide, we had to use the cheetah along with a few helpers to help us set the bead on the wheels. After you mount your wheels and tires, you're going to want to perform an alignment because when you lift and raise a vehicle, the camber and caster specs will be out of the line, so will the toe. So you're going to want to make sure you adjust that as well as adjusting your headlights to lower them because they're going to be shooting pretty high right now. So we're going to need to adjust the headlights. Aim a little downwards so that the customer will be able to see at night. Other than that, we're good to go. This build took about six and a half hours from start to finish. And with the water look and the raised ride height, the customer drove away really satisfied. Mm -hmm.